Laura Martinez. I am logging Hi, in for lecture. Today is um, June 21st, 2022. I am logging in to watch live lecture with Nishana. We're about to start soon, so we're just going to watch me watch lecture with her. I just to see everything.
know we went over this. Can y'all see that? No. Let me share. Okay, can y'all see? Okay, yes. So I know we went over this Thursday, but we're going to go over this again real quick, housekeeping. So this is called the stream. Okay? This is not only because, from what I'm understanding and hearing, is that my students in the classroom really don't get this because they're here. However, this is why you should. This is a stream. I know that my online students take it all the time. But these are the reasons why. Because you see right here, it says, announce something to your class. So this is where announcements are. I know I went over this with my new students because I said, if you ever want to know what's going on or what we're doing for the day or the week, did I not say, Mama, I said this, right? I say this, Lady Z. There, okay. I say come here because you will find announcements. What kind of announcements, Emma? Like that the school is going to be closed for two weeks? Or, or, no, 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 no. Remember when we had some uh, changing of our what? Because you, you asked about it, and I was like, I'm going to find that out. I'm going to put it right here. Our field trip. We had a, uh -huh. so we had a field trip one time. Look at Melissa, she's like, <laughs> cause now she's like, she's real cute, right? So, so yeah, sometimes we go on field trips and things like that. And if we do, cause I may find the information at home. Like I may get a email from Warren after five. Y'all are not morning students, right? But if I'm being, you know, nice, I will respond back to an email at home. <laughs>
you gotta go be people with but make sure that when you get to that part of the service, that there's a place that they're going to work out. I
So why are we explaining treatment room preparation as an integral part of providing Bájale al tuyo. be 
black. What do our bottoms look like? Black pants. Can they have rips and holes and uh, frayed denim? Can we wear denim bottoms? Can we wear frayed denim? I didn't even see that, but can we wear frayed denim bottoms? It should be all black. Let me see, because you probably have a dress code. Stand up, let me see. Now she got the dress on. Um, right. And you can definitely wear black scrubs. You can definitely wear your black 3D lash and brow t-shirt, black bottoms, preferably scrubs, or just a solid black bottom. You cannot wear tight leggings. You're not supposed to wear leggings. If your shirt is covering your bum, okay, if your shirt is covering your bum, otherwise you cannot wear leggings. You cannot wear holy jeans or ribs or braids or anything like that. And were they black? They were all black. Okay. So it's probably good under the radar. So, oh, because those are different, like the stretchy, but no denim. You're not supposed to wear, um, well, they probably look like, you know, Right, but just be mindful. So the reason why we have a dress code is because what? We want you to look professional. We want you to be well put together. We want you to be cohesive, especially obviously we're in school. So we want everybody to be, you know, pretty much cohesive. But an esthetician's appearance of professionalism will reflect your business. Now, I'm going to say this, being mindful of the type of business, okay? Because everybody's business is not going to be the same. Somebody is going to be a sage burning flower, you know, ring around their head wearing esthetician. And her vibe, right, if her business, she's a pro now and she's in her prison room, her vibe may be flowy. Uh, what you call them? You know, yeah, it may be a bohemian chic type thing. And her clients already know that when they come in, that's the vibe. She's going to have her sage and her flowers around her head and you know, may have on a pink t-shirt and yeah, whatever. That's her vibe. But you want to make sure that it's so consistent with your treatment and that you feel like you're being professional. Another reason why as well, like here, no open toe shoes. Why wouldn't you want to wear open toe shoes if it's your girl? Safety. Safety. You want to be you want to be safe, right? Um, imagine doing a chemical peel. Or something that has something that's harmful if it gets on a part of the body that it's not supposed to be on, right? And it falls on your feet or, you know, whatever happens and now you're burned. So you want to make sure that you also have on clothes. So two, it's also for your safety. Not just, eh, I want to make it like hard. Right? It's also always going to be for your safety. Okay? Everyone appreciates working with someone who has a positive attitude being dependable and providing excellent customer service is imperative, okay? So your polished appearance, your positive attitude, and professionalism includes being prepared and means taking initiative to plan enough time to set up your treatment room. Do not be one of the institutions that just want to take as many clients as they can and they're not properly planning or setting up in between um, clients. I would prefer to have that 15 minute downtime between each client to turn my room. Wipe everything down, change my pillowcase if need be, change the sheet. If I'm doing a wax, take my roll, roll the new one out, wipe down my wax pot, you know, spray the room, um, and just making sure that my room is nice, clean, sanitary, and just well set before my next client comes in. If you have that leeway too, it actually downtime of waiting, right? So if you are doing your clients back-to-back, you have a 3.15, a 3.30, 3.45, and this is me hypothetically, no one should be probably have 15 minute appointment, but not giving that that time. So one client leaves at 3, but you have your next appointment at 3 p.m. You're barely out of the door, but now your client is sitting outside, and they're patiently waiting, but you're in there trying to get them together for them to come in. But if you have that little downtime when you're in there, you're cleaning your room, preparing it, by the time they get there, you're ready to treat them. Thanks for coming to see your boutique. Does that make sense? So let's go over our professional image checklist. 
good cut and color are key to professional appearance and aesthetics. Be diligent about keeping hair in healthy condition. Healthy, beautiful hair is linked to healthy, beautiful skin. Keep hair up and away from clients at all times during treatment. Never let your hair brush against your client's skin. Minimal accessories. Jewelry should be cut to a minimum. No jingling bracelets, dangling earrings, long necklaces, or large rings. So, so I noticed you went out and you are Shanna says, even if you have um, wedding rings and promise rings, that you need to take them off when you're servicing clients, unless you want to wear gloves for every single service. Or every two seconds. Or every 
every time you touch something else, you gotta like keep sanitizing okay. something to remember. That's what she said. Oh, this one tastes like dirt. So, thank you. I'm talking Makeup to reflect the image of the spa or salon you're working for. Like makeup is acceptable for both room brows. So the next one will be proper uniform. Your lab coat, scrubs, uniform, or apron should be spotless, freshly laundered, crisp, and ironed. Comfortable clothes, coat, shoes, and in accordance with your state board guidelines are also part of the uniform. Positive energy and a healthy lifestyle. That's positive, huh? <laughs> <laughs> a genuine smile, good posture, eye contact, and an engaging handshake will convey that you have a positive attitude, vitality, and energy. Energy may be hard to come by with a busy schedule. One way to maintain it is with healthy eating and drinking plenty of water. Working on multiple clients relies on having plenty of, plenty of energy without throughout your shift. The last client should have the same experience as the first client of the day. Rest, relaxation, hobbies, and healthy eating will assist the esthetician to have long, what, what long, get, long of it, tea, long of it, in the spa industry.
Abraham, ¿qué estás mirando? Oh, es más not... scary. Oh, yeah.
having the sink within the treatment room in a separate shower area is ideal for a full service skincare salon. It is essential for the thorough removal of facial and body products, proper hand washing, and proper cleansing and disinfection of the work area. Many spas and salons today do not have a sink in the room. The access to water may be in the hall or break room area. In these cases, a hot towel cabinet and bringing in two bowls of water will alleviate any need to leave the treatment room on multiple occasions during a facial treatment. Right. So,
that can be easily for you to clean. You can sweep, swiffer, mop. If you want to have a rug, you know, I have a big rug in my room. You can have that rug. I take it out. I shake it so often. I sweep it, and I vacuum it. But if I decide that I don't want it, I don't have to because it's the flooring to get, you know, like this. But you want to make sure that you have something that's very easily to clean. Also, think about seal. If it's on a rug, it's going to what? Soak up, stain, yeah, all that. So you just want something that's very easy. If you get uh, flooring that you can easily clean, that'd probably be best. Proper lighting. Making sure that you have the proper lighting so that you can see what you're doing, okay? Of course, you're going to have your overhead lighting. I suggest everybody to get a ring light. I absolutely love them. Amazon. They have specials all the time. A ring light, is, and you can move it around. They usually have a cord, so you can move it around. You can tilt it. It is like some of the best lights you can ever have. So making sure that you have proper lighting so that you can see uh, everything that you are doing. No, this was easy. What are the key structural features to look in for school? In care and treatment room area. Size. Outlet. Running water. Washable flooring or workstation. One more. Two more, actually. Size. And proper lighting. You still can't hear me, Stacy? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sure. Stacy, can you hear me? Say yes. Or no. <laughs> we can hear you. I can't hear you. Is anyone talking? I, I can hear you. I'm, we're all talking. I can hear you. All right, let me check it. Hold on. You know how that, you know, sometimes it's, uh, they can someone say that something now? Can you hear us? Yes. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. But hold on, let me make sure I said it because this, 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 this. say something again. Say something. Hello. Thank you. Um Okay. Yeah. Um they probably haven't been hearing us, guys. Because it changed somebody did something to me said. I'm sorry about that. So I don't if you guys I'm sorry, I had no idea. I just thought y'all were really quiet and y'all just party so much over the, you know, <laughs> Juneteenth weekend that nobody was talking. So if you guys were saying something, we hadn't heard you. The settings were changed, so I apologize for that, but we should be on track now. Okay. Describing the idea of ambiance. I like talking about this. And everybody's going to have their own ideal ambiance, okay? But according to my lady, the first seven seconds of a potential client's initial encounter with your spa is going to be critical in conveying your professional image. So they said the first seven seconds. That's like quick, right? The ambiance, including the sight, sound, smell, and feel of your spa, plays a factor in selling your facility to potential customers. The proper spa environment should engage all five of the senses. Um, someone online, give us those five senses. Now that you guys can hear, we can hear you. What are those five senses? 
It is sight, sound, smell, feel. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. What are the, no, not, not all five, but for the spa. The proper um, spa environment should engage in all five senses. What page is it on that? 268. Uh, this one is showing music, temperature. That's two. Lighting and scent. That's four. And one more. I'm not seeing that this one. No? I don't know. Oh, I already said that. It says healthy snacks, so I don't know. Eight. <laughs> Right. If, if you're giving them healthy snacks, then that's something for them to taste. Right. So Savannah said spa water. That is absolutely right. So for lighting, lighting would be one of the five senses. You want proper lighting um, to eliminate a well-designed spa. Okay. That's the first one, lighting. The second would be music selection. Spa sounds will add a definite flavor to your spa's identity. Again, it's going to be everybody's vibe that is different. Somebody might want to play the gospel. Sunday, I play gospel in my spa on Sunday. It's just my preference. I have asked clients, is there a particular station you would like to listen to? And does this music affect you? I have never had a client say, I don't want to listen to gospel. I actually have a long review because I had gospel music playing one day and it touched the place and whole soul. So. Um, but spa selection music is, of course, always our go but again, your room, your, your treatment, okay? The next one's going to be temperature. Keeping clients feeling warm enough to be in a treatment room, but not overly hot or overly cold, okay? Um, scent. Scent should be very nice and smoothing and biting and welcoming and not overpowering. I've been somewhere and this lady's uh, favorite scent was cinnamon. I don't know why everybody likes to go to cinnamon. It, it, it makes me, it reminds me of, for me, anyway, cinnamon is, cinnamon is more of the colder month, okay? You know, when you have those those warmer flavors. Yeah, and it makes me think of Christmas. Right, a pumpkin. But those, I, I, and, I, and I like it to be very subtle. I don't want to walk in and for whatever it is. I don't care if it's eucalyptus tea tree, you know, whatever it is. But you want to make sure that the scent is inviting. So when it comes in, it kind of lingers like, oh, what's that? I think I smell, yeah, what does it smell? So you want it to be an inviting scent. And then taste. You are going to offer naturally flavored water, lemon water, you know, maybe cucumber, mint, or some type of water. And if you want to do snacks, remember, you want to be as healthy as possible. Uh, the Smart Pop popcorn is a really good thing to do. Um, just something that's going to be a healthy, refreshing, you know, little snack, okay? So it's all going to be about creating a relaxing and what we like to say, vibe. Creating a vibe, okay? Now, making sure that client safety um, is always something that you want to make sure that you are following. Um, I do have a candle in my treatment room. I don't have ten candles, but I have eight candles, and it's actually in a huge enclosed. I think I'm supposed to put a plant in it, but it stands up on something. It's a gold based looking thing, and a plant is probably supposed to go in there. But I put my candle in there, and it's away from where I treat my clients, just because I didn't want to have any type of safety issues. Okay. This is how they have ambiance. How pretty that looks. Nice lighting. It looks very clean and relaxing. They got a big bowl of strawberries right here. Not idea. Most people a big bowl of strawberries in the treatment room, but you know, for the sake of training, put that right there. <laughs> Oh, I was thinking of 
yourself uh, for clients. A treatment table. A treatment table. What are you going to use if you don't have a treatment table? So, Effie, tell us about a treatment table. Because I know that's Effie, right? Yes. Okay. Um, a treatment table may come um, equipped to have adjustable height, removable headrest, adjustable head and foot rest, electrical control, and built-in electrical outlet. So that's a treatment table. So um, some treatment tables look like this, and they can uh, be electric. Like they can literally go up and go down. Um, they're more, uh, I guess, electrical. Everybody's not going to have an electrical. Treatment table, those are going to cost a pretty penny as well. Most estheticians have what we have out here, more, more so the five bed. Okay, but it's going to be, again, up to you and your preference. All right, and then we have an esthetician's chair, um, also called an operator stool. Stools need to be ergonomically correct, should be adjustable, comfortable, and can roll around easily. Incorrect angle could cause injury to the esthetician. Or a client. So, as you know, our uh, stools are just the regular round stool that kind of slide around. Um, depending on your preference in your back as well, those can become like a long, you know, if you're sitting for a long time or um, they have lots of chairs, you can look, at, look them up on Amazon as well. Some with that. Um, and then they have the one that was called the saddle chair, I think, that looks like a, uh, the seat looks like a, the, the saddle. Or like a, if you ride a horse. But those are supposed to be more comfortable and give you more back support. They're going to be a little higher price on the ticket wise too. So if you are an institution that really feels that clientele and starts to see a lot of clients, you want to invest in a good institution chair. Okay? All right, someone online. Um, the next on the checklist would be step stool. It's to help clients get on and off the table if you don't have an electric treatment table that lowers down for them. This is correct. You will have some circling challenges, what I like to call clients, some smaller clients. Remember, depending on your age, um, do you do children? Or do you have anybody that's 12, 13, 14 that may be small? But also mm -hmm. think about age, your more mature clients, okay, as well. So those are the ones that you want to be mindful of, too, that may need help. Even by you physically, take their arm, take their hand, help them up on the bed. Sometimes these beds move. They're not stuck to the ground, right? So be mindful of that. So having a step stool is a very good idea as well. Thank you. Next, utility cart and trolley or trolley. If a cart holds tool, supplies, and products, it can be stationary um, or a roll cart. Perfect. Thank you. So, uh, I know my students in here have seen, but I'll just let my uh, online students if you've never seen one something like this rolls has three different shells um this is what we use here in the school generally the products that they're going to be using um initially are going to be right here at the top like the wash and things like that sometimes they're going to have their products maybe sponges or anything like here or their second bowl of water and then there's also one at the bottom this is very good to have because it does move put it on the left or you can put it on the right. So this is a good card to have. Okay. And then the magnifying lamp or light. Anybody online?
steamer. Um, as Eminem said, a steamer is going to aid in deep cleansing. Make sure that it is you well approved. Make sure that it doesn't say on here too that when you are using your steamer that you are only using what kind of water? Distilled water. If you get that water out of the hydrant, it is going to ruin it. Okay? Um, Isabella. Isabel. Isabella. Isabel. Isabel. What is next? Tell me about the galvanic high frequency brush vacuum and spray machine. Okay, so we have the galvanic high frequency brush vacuum and spray machine. We will be doing a mini class. I have to give it LASD because we have an eight in one. And I know some of y'all are like, what is this? How do I use it? What is this? So we're going to put together an eight in one class. So we can just go over each module on the machine. Okay. And next is going to be how warmer. Legacy, what's the what's the what's the uh, uh, partner name next to you? What's the name? Vanessa. You so quiet. I never get. I don't call your name enough. I gotta get your name in my head. All right. Tell us about the towel warmer. Perfect towel. Uh, hot towel warmer. Every premium room needs one. I suggest counting up how many services that you have before you come in and go ahead and make all of your hot towels that morning and put them in your, in your hot caddy. So much easier. Okay. Closed covered waste container for trash can. Fire retardant receptacle. They say metal. With self-closing lid and foot pedal is required for preventing contamination. Okay. Kind of self-explanatory what they say. Closed covered laundry hamper with a foot pedal is ideal for preventing contamination. So you understand why they said they wanted to have a foot pedal? Yeah. And then your sink basin for water to have access to clean water to increase it. And we just talked about how creative you have to get sometimes if you do not have a sink basin in your treatment room. All right, additional items that may be in your treatment room would be a wax warmer, which is an electrical device that's going to soften paraffin wax or hard wax, which can be heat, usually kept activated during the day for walk-ins that are unexpected requests. So you may or may not even have any waxes on your schedule. But we all know, you don't know what you walk into. Someone at the last minute was like, oh, you have a 3 o'clock opening. Maybe it's noon. They book it. If you don't have your wax warmer on and then they walk in and you didn't pay attention to what the service was, you either got to send them away or like, oh, my God, I need to, you know, have a drink, sit down, and, you know, now you got to get your wax. So you want to make sure you turn it on first thing in the morning if you have a client that booked a wax or not and then just turn it off. Okay. Um, the autoclave, you can see the picture right here. We actually have one here. Have you guys ever looked at the autoclave? Yes, no, no, no. Okay, it's next to the, um, it's, it's next to the, uh, the cabinet back there. The hot cabinet. Hot towel one. I'll just show you. So an autoclave is a serologer for implement. Professional name, autoclave. It completely kills all microorganisms, including bacteria, fungi, viruses, and bacterial spores. It sterilizes by pressure steam. Reusable instruments need to be sterilized between treatments. Use disposable supplies to avoid cross-contamination. May not be required in every state. It's good to have your barber side and, you know, you cleanse and all that kind of stuff. But afterwards, at the end of the day, you can keep them in that. Okay? It'll really just kill all the spores, everything. The barbicide and the autoclave. 
I mean, some people don't have an autoclave in their room at all. But, yeah. So we think we could definitely have one. Right. More additional items. Shark disposal container. Why would you need that? Microneedling. I'm sorry, say that again online. Um, maybe for microneedling. Well, and the, but, the, but the thing about this micro lancet, there you go, okay. Because microneedling after you lancet is what you use to, to puncture or to, um, yeah, no, 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 no. A lancet is going to, you're going to click. A lancet is what, like, if you've ever been to the hospital and someone has to get a boiled lance. They cut you open with it. Well, if you were working at a med spa or something, if you were under a directorship of a doctor, right? And that's a good one, Paige. Micro needling. After you micro needle, though, uh, yes, you would take because you don't want to just throw it in your trash can, right? So that's a good one. And then I think Melissa said, uh, dermaplaning. You don't want to just throw it in the trash. You're always supposed to have some type of sharp container to dispose of it, okay? Um, so, lancets, syringes, needles, and obviously, I have a, okay, give me one second. Obviously, just everyone in this room, unless you're going to go and work for a med spa or under a doctor, you, some of these things, of course, you would not have in your treatment room, but some of us will, and you want to have that. Uh, Paige and Marina. Marina, you have a question? Marina? No, ma'am, I'm sorry. No question? Okay, Paige, did you have a question? Um, just more of a statement. Um, on Amazon, they have specific um, like shark containers to help take off your dermaplane blade off of your reusable handles. They do, thank you. And they do have them, and there's usually one that's in a red container and one that's in a blue one. So what she's talking about, so you can buy Dermaplane um, disposable. You can buy them disposable, right? But there's also the sterile metal handle Dermaplane, where you actually reuse it all the time. It's a, it's a metal, the, the handle is metal, right? And all you're doing is getting new blades that are, they come in, they're packaged, and you're putting it on each one because you're going to keep that handle. The only thing you're buying are the disposable um, blades. And really? I like them. By the way, you don't like, you like the one that you, with the handle, with the silver handle? I like them. They, do, they are kind of hard, but... Small handheld mirror. You want to be able to, it's way cheaper for the people to take a lift than the start. There you go. It is, it is cheaper. You get like on Amazon, they can get like a box of 15 or 20 or whatever. Small handheld mirror. Um, hand it to your client, let them see, you know, what it is. I have a huge mirrored wall, but I still have a small handheld for showing up. A binder for safety data sheet. Okay. SES, formerly known as SES, form should be kept in a binder on a or on a computer within the treatment room.
it also helps with you see how that right here it aligns with her lower back but it's also going to help with your posture because i know i tend to find myself doing this and that's so bad for your back i'm still flat anyway i just got that wrong my butt But what well, how these tables out here? But again, so that makes a difference. So if you're getting an electrical, everybody's not going to be able to go in and afford one of those. Those tables are expensive. Those electrical tables they go up and down, and those are not cheap. And most estheticians starting out are not going to have an electrical table. So you're not going to have where you got the head lifted up. So if, if you don't, what do you do in that instance? I have a um, I have several pillows, but I have a pillow. I have a pillow on top of a pillow. I have one that cradles the head. So you have to just find out what works for you and what's going to be most comfortable for your client as well. I haven't gone to an institution yet that has an electric bed. Just I haven't. Not any institution that I know or has worked with. I know a PMU that does, but not an esthetician. Massage Envy, they don't have a good bed. Permanent makeup artist. But, um, so again, be mindful of that, making sure that you are okay with the, with the stool and the bed and things that you have, because a lot of people think it's not hard on the body. It is. You're constantly moving, bending over, reaching, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot on your body. Okay, align the stool with the treatment table for the correct height and position to perform services. I want to say even these beds can be brought down though. They can be lowered. They have the um, they have the hand cranks. Not electrical, but they can be lowered and they and they and they can be higher. Okay, position the body. So you want to make this make sure that your feet should be flat on the floor. And see how I've been this whole time like this. I do this a lot of times. It's improper. It should be flat on the floor with your feet. And hands should be below chest level. So you should never be working like this. You should always be down. Okay, so you should never be having anybody this high. You should always be down. Only your hands or arms should be touching the client. So that means what? Right, you should not be leaning over your client and your boobs are hanging on their face. Right, so feet flat on the ground. What? <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> feet flat on the, the ground, okay? Making sure that your body is aligned and that your arms and hands are chest level. You're not over like this, your back is going to hurt, your boobs are going to be on your client, and all that's going to be on Okay? Maintain a healthy posture and be aware of the position of your back and remind yourself to sit up straight. So then just pay attention to your posture. Because it's going to hurt if you don't. Set up the room in accordance to how it is that you're going to work to. Some people are right-handed, some people are left-handed. Some people like to have their treatment cart on the left side, some on the right side. I'm dominant, right hand, but my treatment cart is on my left side. I know, it's kind of weird, but that's just how I always work. How all my stuff is on this side. But when I get ready to do my microdermy, my machine is on this side because I'm right hand dominant. And that is the hand that I'm going to, I'm going to use this left hand to talk, but I'm going to use my right hand with the machine. So you just have to make sure what's comfortable for you. Everybody's not going to have their treatment cart on this side. Some is going to have their treatment cart on this side. But for me, I've just naturally worked like that. I, I've always, I don't know why, but it's always been on this side. And I think maybe so because my sink is on this side. So for me, I've just adapted to my sink is over here, my cart is over here. I can get my cart, dump my water, put more in. Everything is on this side of me. So maybe that's maybe that's why. Okay. 
Position hey, Ram, you okay, bud? On their backs, their hands. Position the supply cart or counter as close to the facial table as possible. Okay, and you guys have done that from where you've been in the treatment room, and you have your table and your cart is like right there next to you. They also want you to complete hand stretches in between each client. You don't want to get carpal tunnel. Do a lot, you're going to be doing a lot of stuff with your hands. You're going to be doing a lot of movement with your hands. When you get to doing those facials and you're doing those 60 minutes, and if you have a 90 minute facial on your treatment, you're clean, God forbid. That's why I'm not a lasher. <laughs> but you got to make sure that you are exercising and stretching those hands. You'll start to feel stuff that you've never felt. What is that? Because you, you, you know. Well, you've just been writing most of the time. You haven't really been using your hands. So make sure that you are doing that. Rotating your wrist. Just doing some exercises. Okay. Yeah, it's not that long. We're getting ready to go. It's only 63. Mm-mm. So cost of starting your own business. Breaking down needs, supplies, research, and equipment costs. How much do you think it's going to cost you guys when you leave here? What's the ballpark figure? What do you think? Melissa says 10. What? Isabel says 10. You think it's more than that? Oh, y'all need to be with me. What do you think on, online? What do you think? How much do you think it costs to start? And I guess. When we say breakdown, so we're not saying a spa, like you're going to go get a whole building. So when you leave here and you are, you're, you're a pro and you're ready to get out there on your own and you're ready to, you got to get, you know, get your suite, how much do you think it's going to cost you to set up? So Melissa says 10. Online, how much do you think it's going to cost? I think it depends on about 10 too. I think it depends on how you want to. Like if you want to start small. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Aesthetic. What did you say? I think if you start with smaller stuff, like you don't have to get the expensive steamer, get a, a cheaper steamer, um, or, or maybe not even get a steamer yet. I think maybe like five thousand, you can even do it. Okay. Okay, so those are all good. So this is what I'll say. It's gonna it's gonna factor into what it is that you want to do. Okay. I would say start now. It didn't cost me ten thousand dollars. I wish I would. Ten? What? No, 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 no. I said, well, when you come out of here, what do you want to do? If you're going to go and you're going to do a suite, and we got to think about it. They said starting your own business. Some people are going to not need none of that because they're going right from the top or whatever to get their, you know, hands on. Some people are not going to do that, but. What I would say is just make sure that you write down everything, right? Write down everything. Write down everything. You have your first set of products, right? So you're going to add to this. You may start out with one line. You have your basics. You have, what, two or three washes. All you need to do is add maybe some new serum. Do an inventory of what you have. Start your own business, right? Because you have product first. If you don't have a product, you might as well be free about it. You're going to need a bed. You're going to need a steamer. You don't have to go and buy everything outright expensive either, like an eight in one. I mean, those could be anywhere, you know, up to $2,000. It's like some sand. And also, you have to think about where you go, what location. The building that I'm in, you don't need a bed. Why? Because they provide it. I didn't need a bed. I didn't need a bed. All I needed was my decoration, my bookshelf, my steamer. I didn't need a bed. That was, you know, took about $200. So I didn't need a bed. I needed products. I needed, you know, to, to decorate. I needed some curtains. I needed a rug. Um, I already had some products. I've been doing it. But think about
But if you're going into a suite, it may be seven hundred a month, it may be eight hundred a month, it could be a hundred a week. Gross, right? Mm -hmm. So make sure that you put it in the shop. 
hundred more dermatologic product. That's another three hundred. Twenty percent. <laughs> Let Melissa know. Have you done your? Um, probably not. I'll talk to you about it in a minute. I'll talk about it. Okay. So yeah, I want to know what it would look like. What is your plan? What do you What do you think you want to do? You want your own suite, and it's going to be five thousand dollars. I'm going to ask y'all tomorrow. Well, sweet and boots same. Boots, I guess. Well, where, where are you going to get boots from? Boots is more like in the hair style. I'm a 